How's it going, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Insider Gaming News Talk Show. We're actually here on a Saturday edition for our charity stream. Uh, we're su uh, supporting Gamers Outreach Foundation, uh, who actually provide gaming carts to kids in hospitals. Uh, so we're here actually hanging out with everybody, the usual crew today. Uh, Captain Tutu, Jesse, and House Hendo. Welcome, everybody. That was an awesome meta show, and thank you all for doing it. We smashed our goal. We're going to continue on trying to uh, continue, you know, going for day. Um, I just realized I'm not. Tommy, you. Yeah, I know. I, I did. I just shut it off. I, I just realized as I heard it, I was like, oh. We're um, fixed. I've been running like giveaways and everything in the background all day. So if you guys have seen me, I've been there and hanging out. Uh, we got a lot of news today. There's a lot of different news on a bunch of different like basically conventions that actually happened this weekend. Uh, they talked actually a little bit yeah, about it. Uh, talked a little bit about a G star that was just going on in the meta show. Uh, we also had the uh, XO 19 from Xbox. Um, also just a lot of other random news outside of these events too, which is pretty crazy. Uh, but we usually start this, the segment with uh, what have we been playing this week? Kind of going into, you know, the stuff that we play in our day to day lives. Uh, Jesse, go ahead and start. What have, what have you been playing this week? I'll start. Um, so I've been, you know what? I stuck back with Payday 2 for a little while. I played that for the first part of this week. Um, and then I switched off of that. And I've kind of been coasting a little bit on uh, this game that I've been... I got it a long time ago. Like, I want to say probably almost three years ago. Called Mini Metro. Um, oh, yeah. Mini Metro is great. Mini Metro is great. It's this cute little Metro management game. And um, all I do is I just pop it open. You know, I'm, I'm sitting in the dining hall. I'll pop it open and I'll just play it and I'll build a little New York Metro. And it's great. Um, I have a great time doing it. So um, that's mostly what I've been playing uh, right now. Um, I've been trying to get into command, but it's very complicated. And my brain is uh, not not able to handle that very often. So that's what I've been playing. I, I, it's been a very dry week for me. Uh, Hendo, what about you? Uh, I've been playing some more Destiny 2, but I've been playing uh, Banished a lot too, which is um, it's a management game. You, know, you create a little village of exiles, you build it to a city. Um, Destiny, I've been playing that new event, trying to get up to the ninth forest. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, that's it's a lot of Destiny is so much fun. There's so much content in it right now. Yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been a lot of fun with it. I maxed out all my characters, so I've just been trying to max out to get some legendary loot, some good engrams. Um, also, Stellaris, the mod community caught up a little bit. So I got some of my ships back, so I've been playing Stellaris a little bit now. They added uh, a new voice advisor who's kind of a, a Bolshevik kind of socialist type, and I've been having super fun with getting announcements from him lately <laughs> in the games. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah, sees the means of the production for the galaxy. Hilarious. Chichi, what about you? How, how's, uh, what's, what have you been playing this week? Uh, still lots of uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm in love with that game. Uh, mainly playing the online mode multiplayer. And then, of course, on uh, Friday, I got uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield. I got the Shield Edition. 
and man, it is it is such a great experience. Uh, really surprising, like all the new additions that they added. I mean, it's still like traditional Pokemon, but like some of the new stuff, like the wild area, and just seeing like all those people like roam around is really awesome, really exciting. Um, and uh, I, I can't wait to play more of it. I might be playing more uh, in a little bit um on here and uh i played uh star wars jedi fallen order like late last night um just to kind of get a sense of it because i kept hearing people talking about it and i felt like i couldn't go to sleep without playing it uh it is wow it's so damn good uh even like the first couple hours are just really cinematic really awesome and the main character kyle Cassis is such a badass i can't wait to see you uh stream and play it tonight it's gonna be awesome Oh yeah, I I have actually have my slot tonight at midnight uh, PST three yeah. three a.m. Uh, EST. Uh, yeah, I've been on the kind of the same boat lately. Like with the uh, games, I was playing a lot of Destiny up until this week, and then of course Red Dead has taken up a bit of my time, and then Pokemon Sword and Shield. Like I spent a good chunk of time even last night and the night before playing Pokemon Sword and Shield. Like oh man, I love. I actually really like the new the new Pokemon. It's it's really nice. Yeah. Like, it's just different. It's, like, different enough, but it's got that enough familiar feeling of it. Like, and being able to play on your TV is great. Like, I'm so tired of having the console. I mean, like, the little handheld, you know, like, Nintendo DS versions. Like, as much as I love the DS, it was great to take it along, but I don't generally enjoy playing games when I'm out and about because I'm usually busy when I'm out and about. Versus this, I'm like, oh, well, I go. I want to go play. I'm going to go play on my TV. Now, granted, if I want to play portable, I can with the Switch, which is great. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, it's 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 definitely... A lot of fun. Um, but yeah, that's kind of been my thing. Tonight, I'm going to be actually playing the Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, as you said, and I'm really excited to get into that. As you guys can see, my my shirt here. <laughs> <laughs> you, you came prepared. I, I came prepared with that today. Uh, but let's go ahead and get in, into the news today. It's actually kind of a like an, a weird week with like the three different, um, two or three different events that came out this week, plus like just the news that we've been hearing about either delays, uh, issues, um, just a lot of different things, especially like Stadia. Like, let's go ahead and talk. Let's talk a little bit about Stadia. Oh, Christy Gen God, six oh six months. Thank you so much. Uh, cloud gaming doing cloud things. So when Stadia came out, it made a lot of really broad promises. Like it was coming out, it's going to be like the first big cloud platform. It's going to have its own inc inclusive um, game purchases. Basically, it's counting itself as a. Uh, gaming platform but separate from everything else like you're not going to be able to connect your steam accounts you're not going to be able to connect your ubisoft origin epic whatever and you're gonna to have to rebuy the games they haven't even clarified even i don't think to this day a side of destiny destiny is a hard no like it's only in its own universe for like people playing together um but then for other games and other stuff they're they're cross-platform so it doesn't matter after that point because everybody kind of logs into the same service even if you're on the cloud uh, for the client, you know, like, say, for example, um, what is it called? Uh, like any of the Star Wars game, like if you play the new or Star Wars game or the new EA games, like the new Need for Speed Heat, for example, yeah. or Grid was another one. Grid was another big example of things that, you know, they're going to talk about doing, which we'll get to here in a second. But they're making a lot of really big, broad promises without basically, you know, coming out with anything. Well, now they had the AMA that happened uh, earlier this week, and it basically kind of dumbed down the entire expectation of what they were promising on launch, which is really interesting to have a company like basically go and backtrack. Like as you see the releases and the announcements coming out like the week before the platform's supposed to come out, which is, you know, it's kind of shitty in the end. It's like, why are, why are you guys doing this? You're, you're telling us to roll back our expectations on something you made the hype about in the first place. Um, to some degree, it actually really makes me happy that I didn't end up pre-ordering pre it because now, like, I feel like it's kind of a waste. I want to sit back and see what happens now. I mean, I don't know. What, what do you guys, how do you guys feel about that part of Stadia? Like, basically saying, we're only getting 12 games on launch and you only have limited capability of playing with other people. Yeah, they, they took away a lot of what makes Stadia Stadia. Um, and I, I'm curious as to why they thought this was a good idea. Um, because to be honest with you, it's not. Um, but I don't. I don't know. I, the fact that they rolled back a lot of the things that they were talking about to just nothing is kind of not okay to me. Um, it's it's like it's like the Epic Games issue where people suddenly just pulled um, they they just pulled their games over to Epic and pulled them off Steam with like no warning. 
it's the same thing with this Google Stadia thing is they they offered a bunch of stuff and then they just pulled the plug again. Um, I like what this guy final in chat just said. I wouldn't touch a group that does stuff like that. Opening your platform with overpromising uh, says a lot about the company. Um, it's it's wrong and false advertising, of course. Um, yeah. And it... it's unfair to a lot of uh, players like us who want to play the games that we want to play from start on a platform that functions the way that our computers do. Yeah. Like, I, I, I... Oh, sorry, I was going to say, the, just to give you an idea of like some of the biggest things that they're rolling back or they had to actually step back on. So Buddy Passes won't arrive until the week, uh, a few days after the launch, which doesn't make any sense because that was the reason why you, you got the Founders Edition to begin with, <laughs> is to play with a friend. The existing Chromecast Ultra dongles that are coming with the Stadia stuff, the existing ones on the market aren't getting the uh, latest firmware uh, on day one. They're actually going to get them a week late which doesn't make any sense. And basically you have to wait for your Stadia dongle to come to play. If you already, if you didn't, you know, already have one. No, uh, no stream connect state or share or crowd play at launch, which was one of the biggest features. They were saying that YouTube creators were going to be able to use to play with their, their, their fans and their audience. Um, no visible achievement system at launch, which was another big one that was rolled back. Um, there's no, and it's not going to come until probably December. And, Google isn't promising that you're going to get your Stadia bundle at launch to begin with. <laughs> They're saying there's actually delays in some of their hardware, <sighs> even though you you could have pre-ordered like four months ago. Here's this thing that you can pre-order and have a lot of money for, but also you're not going to get it by the time that you want it. I've or we're, or we, we told you you were getting it. <laughs> yeah, or we told you by the time we were going to get it. But no, you know, let's just take that away too. Yeah. Hendo, what were you going to yeah, say? I'm sorry. I this is a problem. I never really had much hope for Stadia in this market to begin with. Like maybe in like smaller countries and you know, maybe South America, maybe some parts of Europe it could pick up traction. But I I thought they were promising a lot of blue sky from the beginning with Stadia, to be I honest agree. with you. Being the first cloud gaming console and they're gonna promise all this good stuff and like, yeah, we're gonna get our own developers, we're gonna have our own games, we're gonna set up our own corner of the market. At this stage in the game, it's really not possible. Like, Epic was only able to pull it off because of Fortnite. Right. And yeah. Bethesda only pulled off their own launcher because of, you know, Fallout. Yeah, final. It sounds a lot like it was just a money grab. Um, and they were the development team was probably like, we need something for this. And they just grabbed a bunch of cash and then did nothing that they promised with it. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. Yeah, it, I know for uh seems like a dirty for, tactic. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> for Tommy and I, we were both really excited for Stadium when it was first like announced and they showed off like details and stuff like that. And uh we kind of thought of it as like an extension of like what you already own, like your games and all that, versus like a brand new platform. Um, which is like it, it's really hard to get people adopted to a new platform, you know, especially nowadays. And um I think it's like every news update and everything that they've done since that initial reveal has just gotten worse and worse and worse like i knew yeah. that it was going to launch without a lot of the well without at least some of the features um that they promised but you know this is like almost every stripping it down feature. to nothing <laughs> yeah but except yeah. for just the cloud gaming itself which is like it's, it's really crappy it's really sucky it's like um, cool let's tell you about this awesome thing and we're going to give you a tech demo in the meantime while we while you wait for the full release that you paid for <laughs> yeah like, i can see like I could see this picking up in like certain parts of Europe and like South America, maybe right. in a couple of years they could develop it something better. But from the gate, they've been promising a lot. Well, okay, so you gotta you gotta think though. There's like so you have um I think it's Shadow Gaming or Sh Shadowcast or I think something like Shadowcast, Shadowcast, and then you have an, uh, GeForce Now, which play your existing games with any of the plat any of the main launchers, and it's free, and you're playing the stuff you already own. You don't have to do anything special. Now, granted, it's not the same architecture and it's not on Google's back end, but why didn't Google just take up on something like that and do it better? Like, they right. have the resources just to do that. Like, why try to make a whole new gaming platform? Like, yeah, it's cool. Like, you want to do that. But if it's not crossplay, which crossplay obviously is becoming a bigger and bigger subject these days, like, why are you even going to waste our time trying to introduce this? It's going to, you're basically setting, it seems like they're setting themselves up to fail in this regard. Yeah, it, yeah, and I didn't think about that. Yeah, Google really does have the resources they want to. They could make the mythical Omni console. Yeah, and, and think at the same time too. Like we were like like uh, 
Captain said, like, we were both really excited, but the more details that came out and the more they're saying you can't do all of these things, the more we're like, well, why even buy it? Like, this right. is... Right, I see no reason to buy at this point completely. And I didn't before, but I definitely don't now. Um, I, 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 There's no... There's nothing that makes this good. Um, in no. fact, it, there's a lot that's making it bad, and there's no reason for me to buy it. I, I feel like it's a all in one system with on demand option basically i mean that's what they that's what they they were you know selling it for too is basically that and it's just it's just kind of weird i don't know um it's a mess it's, it's definitely a mess. a mess it's a huge mess like i don't uh i don't want to support like if i had actually pre-ordered cause let's go back to the pre-order part if i had actually pre-ordered at this point because i was so excited about the initial announcement i would actually be fuming and cancel my pre-order at this point Man, yep. yes Agreed. and if they and didn't let me to cancel my pre-order i would go as far as call the credit card company and have them reject that payment because like screw that like i would have been just furious because they're not delivering on anything they were selling it's basically you know like like Praetorian said, it was basically false advertising, which is just wrong in every way, yeah. shape, and form. It's another Google cash grab. Yeah. Hey, and there's already been legal precedent to set for your refund um, with certain other companies yeah. recently. Now, now, on a positive note for Stadia, though, I mean, like, I want to see what happens with it. I want to ultimately see where it goes and how it develops. But one of the cool things that did come out of this, at least of the news for the launch week, is the new racing game Grid we actually reviewed here on INN. And I thought it was a great game, but it was very little marketed or talked about. Now, Stadia is picking it up and actually going to have a 40 car grid race in that game, which is apparently only possible on Stadia because of the network infrastructure on single, um, you know, single login PC. Which is kind of interesting. I don't know how they're going to how that all works on the back end. But I mean, 40 cars versus I think it's 12 is what you could do now. So, I mean, that's that's yeah. a pretty wild that is difference in players hey, 40 cars is going to be crazy uh, oh it'd be chaos <laughs> handle that it's, it's going to be total chaos yeah yeah it does and it also kind of sounds like something you'd see at like at dave and busters a little bit right you know, like <laughs> yeah a little bit. All around the country you know hey you never know dave and busters near you has it as a <laughs> they just put hook up a bunch of tvs surprised. i wouldn't be surprised they just have a bunch of big setup for like all car like a whole bunch of console setups <laughs> <laughs> or like yep. some like fancy thing because you know it's Dave and Buster's. They you know make yeah. a make a Oculus into like a giant contraption. <laughs> yeah. So talking about some of our upcoming uh, news that we have, we were talking about on Meta Show, or they were talking, uh, Brisk and Matani were talking about on Meta Show is the uh, Pearl Abyss G Star. Uh, Hendo, why don't you tell us about that? Pearl Abyss is if you guys any of you guys play Black Desert Online, the really high fantasy you know, Korean MMO style. Uh, they, they came out with a few games, actually. Um, those of you who follow EVE Online know that also at the same event, you know, they promoted the localization for EVE in Korea. These are some of the other things that were announced there as well. They announced Plan 8, which is kind of like Terminator meets Horizon Dawn a little bit. It's really set, like, in the current time frame. Seems kind of cool. I watched the trailer a few times, checked out some of the gameplay, what they got so far. It also has, like, an exosuit component. It does. It looks like it's heavy that, but it's mainly just for strength augmentation, kind of like a Elysium kind of-esque exosuits. And they're interchangeable. It looks pretty cool. I'm a little concerned because I haven't really seen much for actual gameplay. I've seen a lot of cinematics with little tidbits of gameplay. So I am really curious of how that works. Um, they announced another game called Doki 5. Um, I don't know if that's really going to get a big American release, to be honest with you, because it looks really more like a Korean game they're trying to bring out to the American market. It looks fun. It's very colorful. It got kind of like a four kids kind of vibe for the older people out there. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. It, you know, it feels like a four kids ever made an MMO like Toontown. It would be kind of like this. Yeah, it's a look- mobile game too. Yeah, it's, it's all mobile, which that's, as we know, it's been a growing trend. MMOs on mobile. I've seen some decent stuff with, like, the Avengers mobile game with my buddy. He plays it all the time. He's, like, addicted. You know, and then the coup de gras to me, Crimson Desert. All right. I have a couple issues with this game just because it's. Well, let's, let's, hear, let's hear about what the game is first. No, yeah, yeah, about the, game is first. the game is intended to be a prequel to Black Desert. It seems functional. It takes place in the north. 
It has kind of like a Skyrim Game of Thrones vibe. So it's still keep with the high fantasy, but it's going to be like more grittier in the past preamble for The Shadow came about, which is your companion in Black Desert. So I don't know exactly how that's going to work when it comes to what your vehicle for learning the game is going to be. But they're adding a full-on single-player campaign instead of just, you know, the fetch quest that uh, De- uh, Desert had with expedi- uh, uh, exposition dumps. So it should be an actual campaign this time. Um, the cinematics look really good. Um, I will give them that. They're doing actual cutscenes. Uh, good on them. Uh, but yeah, it's like, it's kind of Game of Thrones. The character kind of has like a North of the Wall, Night's Watch kind of vibe. Um, it's going to be high fantasy. You're going to go around mountains. They got some new monsters, big boss battles. Um, it looks like, uh, they, it's kind of like, um, for those of you not familiar with Pearl Abyss and the black, the desert kind of franchise, it's kind of like real time final fantasy, like no turn base, but you still got the big monsters, high graphic value, rich story world, crazy amounts of, uh, different characters. It looks like they're introducing some new creatures. Of course, they have like their own version of orcs in it. Um, and again, they're making this a prequel to Black Desert Online, which is where I was starting off on as seems kind of like they're abandoning Black Desert to me overall and going to be focusing on this. Uh, I don't know if abandon is the right word. Yeah, Maybe stop no, development. I well, I mean, like, kind of like not abandon, like uh, tone down. A little bit on it. I'm sure their team has grown since Black Desert, right? Like, yeah. Oh, dramatically, yeah. It's like oh, three yeah, or four yeah. times the size now. So I, I'm, I hope at least they'll have multiple teams for each game, each project. Yeah, I do too, because I really like how uh, Black Desert has a really very c- class system. <laughs> like, I have, well, I tried to get almost one of every type of character, but there's a limit. <laughs> <laughs> it's but crazy. The and- variety is amazing. Well, just note like all these games that got re- released from Pearl Abyss too are all MMOs. Like every single one of them. Yeah. Planet is also an Exosuit MMO shooter. The I want to. How do you pronounce it? Doki V. Yeah, it's, I, it's, I Doki think it's Doki V. No, Doki, Doki V. They say it at the yeah, end. Of the I think it's Doki. Oh, okay. okay, I thought they were just using a Roman numeral. In it. And and then and then Crimson Desert are all, is also an MMO. So this is like it's nothing but MMOs that are releasing, which is kind of crazy because you think. Uh, MMOs even a couple years ago was suffering from like a huge fatigue, like kind of like, you know, Battle Royales is kind of suffering the fatigue now. And the same thing with MOBAs and even card games getting to a point where it's getting to, starting to hit its fatigue because everybody and their mom is making one. Um, but what is it? What do you guys think that's going to do when you have, you know, two, you know, two new basically PC MMOs coming out like they're kind of niche markets, I think, for one of them, for sure. The other one is kind of catering to pandering to an existing audience for uh, black desert but i kind of worry that it's going to take away from their own subscribers like they're competing with their own with themselves basically for this one you yeah, know I what feel, i feel like they're competing with themselves while intending to compete with eso that's why i feel like crimson desert is I no know. i think i think i don't think they're competing with themselves because i think they're releasing two different kinds of games for different two different kinds of players yeah um, I was gonna say, you know i'm not i'm not at all interested in sorry hendo i'm not at all interested in crimson desert like that's just not my type of game but like nah. doki v and plan eight Dude, which looks plan amazing. eight oh my god um, and that's all in game well they say it's all in game footage at least again now. if that is all game in game footage even if it isn't it still looks amazingly badass and it's right. something that I want to try and play, but I have no interest in playing Crimson Desert and vice versa. I'm sure that the people who play Crimson Desert have no interest in playing us, uh, um, have no interest in playing uh, Plan 8. So I think me and Tommy are referring to Black Desert Online versus Crimson Desert. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah Crim- point, Crim- feels- Crimson and yeah, Crimson Desert and Black Desert. I mean, if Crimson Desert's meant to be a prequel, then you're splitting your audience essentially with that. Uh, Okay, so it's just a Destiny Destiny Two situation where Destiny had not finished, but they released Destiny Two anyway. Um, I think it's just going to be the same thing. Um, maybe you know, I don't. Maybe. Yeah, but then they essentially merge the Destiny games together, which you just get Destiny Two and you can play from the beginning of Destiny One. Yeah, that's true. You know, I don't know if Pearl Bis is going to do something like that. It just seems they're making a completely separate MMO to explain another MMO. Which means, you know, people have double dip instead of making a content expansion or something that you could dip within the same universe. Yeah. I don't know. I think it'll be interesting. Um, I'm 
I'm sure we'll be talking about it more in the future. They could have changed the engine a little bit. That could be also a reason for doing it because there's a lot of crazy stuff you can do mechanically in Black Desert Online when it comes to the character variation. Yeah. So maybe they tweaked some things and made a new engine and had to go Crimson Desert. But Plan 8 does look cool. Yeah. It's just, you know, I don't... Like, are they going to do more PvP focused? Is it going to be a looter shooter? Is it going to be a swarm thing? Is it going because they kind of have elements that look like a little bit like Destiny, a little bit like um, Division Two, and then like you throw in some World War Z. I'm sure we'll find so, out. It's E3. all over the place. I don't know if they're just going to have a bunch of variation of game modes though. That could be it too. Listen, it looks yeah. cool to me. I'm excited. So, all right, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the big one. Talk about uh, Halo uh, Reach. Coming to uh, PC on December 3rd. Um, yes. That's coming up quick, too. Oh, man. I am so excited for this. Um, it is a prequel to Combat Evolved, um, which is now raising some rumors that um, they're going to be trying to release um, these in order of game. So it's going to be Reach, and then it's going to have uh, Combat Evolved, and then it's going to evolve further into the rest of the games. Um, they also confirmed that Halo 5 will not be coming to PC, um, as that's console exclusive, but everything all the way up to 4 will be there. Um, it's going to have some updates. It'll be in 4K. Uh, should run better, um, probably a little better than 60 FPS, and it's going to include native mouse and keyboard support, um so this is the first one to come out from master chief collection um they will be sold on pc as individual titles and then will be sold as a package when they're all released um they're going to be released in chronological order um which is reach combat evolved two three odst and then four um they're, they're sold as a package now you can pre-order it for uh yeah you can pre-order the bucks. package get the whole collection 40 bucks for all of the halo games is not a bad deal at all the, um, deal, the, the thing that confuses me about the the, the halo re release on steam is that if you don't buy the collection for 40 bucks you could buy reach for 10 but every other game on there for whatever reason is listed yeah, at 40 bucks i, 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 saw that. I didn't oh, understand crazy. that that might just be like a uh a, a, like a wrong thing or something i hope it's an error but like Dude. listen i'm just gonna get the whole package so um i'm very excited um oh they fixed the it since then Oh, okay. So now, now it shows only the single game or the package, and then the package. If you look at the prices on on the rest of them, it shows NA. One of the first games that I uh, was quote not allowed to play unquote was uh, Halo Combat Evolved, and I downloaded it and played it anyway on PC, and it was one of the greatest experiences I've ever had with a Halo game. Um, and it jump started me into buying the actual Master Chief Collection when I got an Xbox. Um, so I'm very excited to play Reach. Um, actually, you know what, for the first time, um, I don't think I have played Reach before, but I've played everything else, um, up to ODST. Yeah, I haven't actually completed Reach. I've played through most of it, but I've never actually completed the campaign. Yeah, I never it, completed I, I, I think it would be really fun. I, I played it when it came out in 360. Uh, Hendo, you played it back in the Dark Ages. Yes, I oh. did. I, <laughs> I did, too. Out, baby. I yeah. was all over Halo, uh, hey, back in the I, day. When I was on active duty, man, that's all you played was console. You didn't have time to maintain a PC. Yeah. So everybody had an Xbox or a PlayStation. We all sold them to each other when we, like, deployed or went out or something like that. Like, I know how many times I, I bought an Xbox for 50 bucks? <laughs> At least six times. <laughs> uh, just to take right. a quick segment here, we're going to talk about Gamers Outreach. If you guys haven't uh, checked it out, we're doing our 24-hour stream. We're kind of, at, like, a little over halfway through. Um our 24 hour stream for gamers outreach we've actually hit our goal we're going to try to see if we can continue on and push on and see how far see how far we can get for today uh meta show was actually graceful enough to actually complete the rest of the goal they actually raised over 500 dollars by itself on the meta show um so to kind of carry over from what they did today we weren't able to actually run all of these giveaways during the show we're actually going to be spreading out all of the steam giveaways throughout the rest of the remaining shows today so we're not even you don't even have to donate for the remaining of them we're going to be just doing them out throughout the rest of the day but for every 50 dollars, it'll actually trigger an additional one uh we'll be continuing that captain tutu is going to be actually up next after this um we're actually going to need your help in a few minutes and help him figure out what you guys want to see you guys and girls want to see on his stream here shortly after the insider 
Um, just to get kick this off, I'm actually I've just started a Steam Key giveaway in chat. Type in exclamation point ticket if you want to enter the Steam Key giveaway. Uh, this, you know, just redeem it on Steam. It's basically a pretty easy uh, grab for it. Uh, but yeah, gamers outreach, benefiting the kids in hospitals, giving them uh, the power through gaming to actually hang out and play some games when uh, when they're not, you know, going through a not so tough time or, or a tough time. Not so tough. Time. <laughs> I would say not so tough time. I, was, I when they're having a tough time. Let's move uh, on. Let's talk about uh, X Bone. Xbox yeah, so, One and PC at XO 2019. Yeah, XO 2019. So what prompted the, the news for uh, Halo Reach coming out was XO, or I, I want to say it's XO 19? I don't XO know. 19, yeah. XO yeah. 19? XO 19. We had a huge list of, of game releases and announcements uh, coming out of this. So just to start off with them, Obsidian's Grounded uh, enters early access this spring. It's um, basically a new sandbox survival game, which is something a little bit different for Obsidian. Uh, like some of the other stuff was essentially like a sandbox RPG, but this is a sandbox survival, which is kind of different and interesting. Um, I just heard something. Oh. Luke Severt. For the follow, thank you. Uh, do not nod to tell me why, which is uh, basically the, from the creators of Life is Strange uh, with another story driven adventure. Uh, kind of telling a story about a. I think it was a, it was a transgender person. Yeah, it's a trans yes. character and a trans character, and they haven't they haven't revealed all the details on that yet. They're just saying it's going to be a three episode game with release in the full summer on Xbox One and PC, including Steam. Uh, I'm excited for this, but oh, hell yeah. it looks. I mean, it's the Life is Strange developers. I love their games. They're they're really great storytellers. And they it's partnered about, with Glad, which is pretty cool. Yeah, trans rights. They partnered with Glad. Damn time. Yeah, right. I saw your tweet. <laughs> uh, Rare's also releasing a new game called Everwild. Uh, it's gonna, it's got an, a TBD unknown <laughs> release release date, so it's gonna be quite a while for that. Uh, the Final Fantasy games are coming to Game Pass. Uh, not today, but it's it's gonna be sometime in the end of 2020. Final Final Fantasy seven, eight, nine, ten, ten two, twelve, and all three of the thirteens <laughs> and fi and fifteen. Yeah. Are coming to the Xbox like to, Game Pass. <laughs> in this brief moment, um, if you are a Discord Nitro subscriber, you have Xbox Game Pass for three months yeah. uh, on Nitro. So go and redeem that now because it's uh, pretty cool. Yep. And then in some of the, and including in that is uh, the Age of Empires 1 and 2 and Rage 2 all just came to the Xbox Game Pass as of yesterday. Or, yeah, yesterday. So you actually have a lot of those that are coming. The Accusa series also is coming to Xbox One, which is... I'm actually kind of excited for that. You accuse the series pretty good. It just came to PC, you know, for the first time in a while recently. Uh, the recent Kingdom Hearts games are also going to be coming out. 1.5, 2.5, 2.8, and eventually 3. Um, and and 3 is out. It's a demo for 3. Oh, 3 is out. It's a demo for 3. Okay. Yeah. And then we also have Wasteland 3 coming in May. Uh, a new Sea of, Thieves up sea of Thieves update coming November 20th, which is actually coming up here pretty quick. The Seabound Soul is the new tale of quests with, uh, as well as new ammo type fire bombs, which is actually going to be pretty interesting. And there's a whole lot, whole lot more. I don't know if I want to keep going on. It's just there's so yeah, many games to list. Just, you know, there's so much. <laughs> I tried to burn through a little bit of it, but there's a lot. I can do it. I can do it real fast. Are you ready? Here well, we no, 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 no. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll put it. We'll put the link here in chat if you want to check out all the other games out here. There's also trailers included in that article, which is great. Um, uh, we. Probably the biggest thing I would say uh, for me coming out of this is xCloud, like all the news on xCloud, like xCloud, they're doing like a public preview kind of yeah. beta thing with um, uh, mobile and uh, Xbox. And next year, they're bringing it to PC. And the cool thing about xCloud, we were talking about Stadia earlier, is that xCloud is completely free with Game Pass. So um, like if you have Game Pass, you can just stream all those games on any, any device, anywhere you want uh, versus Stadia, where you have to pay per game and. You know, right now you have to pay just to get into Stadia, um, which I think is is amazing that uh, Xbox is doing that. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were kind of talking about, right? With like with the cloud services, like yeah. if you're going to offer cloud services, it's coming with Xbox Game Pass, which is giving you the games with it. Like you're not being charged for a platform, a separate platform, and you don't have to pay extra for the games. Like you're already getting them, including in the one subscription price, which is $15 a month for both. 
like, and then they'll I, juke you out by removing features in the middle of their exactly. release. Exactly. And they're constantly releasing stuff. And in fact, like I think right now in terms of like the subscription services that are out, the two best ones hands down are the Xbox Game Pass and the Ubisoft Plus. Hands down are the two yeah. best services you could yeah. do. Now, very, very close to uh, Ubisoft Plus is the Origin Premiere, which is uh, the both uh, Uplay Plus and Origin Premiere are both $15 a month. Great value for both of those. In fact, all three of those are 15 bucks a month. And and really, if you really were going to pick two, my my personal suggestion would be the Xbox Game Pass and um, Uplay Plus. Agreed. Now, Origin I... Premiere is good if you want the Origin EA specific stuff, but it's still a good value too. I'm very much here for the Game Pass. Um, and considering that it's included in Discord Nitro right now, um, it's totally worth it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You can play Outer Worlds for free. Or, you know, but with yep. with Nitro, basically, like how you cannot like you literally a brand new game that just came out that everybody's been waiting for from Obsidian and you get to play it with Game Pass. Best deal yeah, ever. Uh, it is. <laughs> uh, Overall, I'd say I, I walked away pretty impressed with this whole uh, presentation is weird because I always forget that Xbox has their own like kind of convention thing. But uh, every year it just creeps up and surprises me. Um, I think a lot of people were kind of expecting like a lot of next gen news. And got disappointed because of that. And I, I just feel like now is like not the time, you know. I just think they should go out strong with current gen, which is what they're doing. And then, you know, next year kind of talk about next gen, the games coming to next gen, things like that. And I assume, you know, of course, some of these games have to be coming uh to the next Xbox and whatnot. Yeah. Well, I think that they've already it's confirmed correct. some backwards compatibility with Xbox One games, correct? Or have they not uh, done that? I don't remember if they did yeah. or not at E3 when they announced it. Yes. Pretty much Xbox going forward uh, is like a, a platform, um, pretty much like everything. You'll, you'll be able to play everything on any Xbox device going forward, of course. Not backwards, but going forward. Now, now think of... Oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, as I say, now think of it on the other uh, spectrum of this. Like if they go and release this cloud platform and they're going to release another console and you're going to have this included in it. Now, what's to say that you don't, you're not even going to have to buy the next console because the cloud is going to take it over? Yeah, you don't. That's that's crazy. Like Xbox is really transforming into something di different that we don't see from these other you know competitors. We don't see that from Nintendo. We don't see that for PlayStation. It's really just like a, a service now. Like you don't really need the consoles. Like especially if you have a PC now, and then going forward with X Cloud, as long as you have a tablet, uh, uh, you know, just any computer, you can just boot up a uh, X Cloud and play any games that you want. Exactly. It's definitely games as a service now. Um, and you know what? It's cool. Um, I, I'm listen, as we're talking right now, I'm downloading the Xbox Game Pass um, just to see what's <laughs> on it. And it's so easy to do, um, you know, not to like overly shill Microsoft, but like this is pretty cool. Um, and I think that the ease of access to games like this is super cool. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, like, and that's the thing, it's getting easier. Like, as you get these game subscriptions that are coming out and becoming more popular. Now, granted, like, we're going to eventually hit subscription fatigue. So please, no, not every game company do this. Either bundle yeah. up on one of the existing ones, but don't make another one. <laughs> it's kind of like some some money streaming services are doing the same thing. They're, you're actually getting stream, streaming service fatigue at this point, too. Yeah, and besides, I think this was the long game that Microsoft always planned for Xbox to come full circle. Yeah. Bring exactly. the console into the PC. Get both markets. Microsoft dominates. <laughs> <laughs> like so, Apple thinks they're sh they're shifty. Microsoft. Mm -mm. Well, what what's hilarious too is is um, Microsoft has also been asked like they're helping out with the infrastructure for PlayStation Network now too. It's like the Azure uh, cloud network, like is basically what the new PlayStation Live service is basically being built on. So yeah, I think like. Microsoft must be doing something right if everybody's coming to them as their gaming service equivalent of like AWS or, you know, like Amazon's cloud service, basically. Because well, Azure is basically the next best thing. They were smart. They focused on the games. Yep. This, yeah. this is what Google should have did. Google tried doing what Xbox worked towards. Like, X, like Xbox didn't announce Xbox Live. No, they announced the console and a couple games they got rights with the studios for. You know, we got... Um, Halo, of course, and like several other games, you know, there's Odd World, all kinds of stuff. You know, they, they brought in the money where its mouth is and they made a platform that worked for years. And when it comes to current gen fatigue, I think people got used to because if you think about it, we went from the PS1 to the current generation extremely quickly. Yeah. yeah. You know, we've had an explosion. That's why they're focusing because it's not really 
much we can do further the in further the actual hardware without going into like you know quantum computing almost <laughs> yeah i mean like even even just to look at it's just the rate of tech basically right now i mean like in like the old lifespans used to be 10 years they can't even make 10 years now because how much the tech comes along in that time yeah they, and, and like we're literally at a point where it's getting too small yeah like the yeah. actual electrons won't actually fit <laughs> <laughs> Uh, going on the next news, uh, Tutu, I think this is you. Path yes. Uh, so I have, I have a deep hidden love for ARPGs. I really love, uh, Diablo. Recently I picked up a uh, path of exile and I've been falling in love with it. Um, so, uh, this weekend exile con, they had their own convention going down and they had a ton of, uh, major announcements for the future of uh, path of exile. Um, so the f- first thing that they came out with, which was crazy, is uh, they announced a Path of Exile 2, um, which like blew people's minds. So this isn't like a, a, an official sequel, though. This is more in line with kind of like uh, Fortnite 2 or Fortnite Chapter 2, where it's just there's so much new content and so much new like um, things in the game that they just figured, you know, might as well uh, slap a two on it, build up hype. Um so there's no release date yet for Path of Exile 2 still ways off, uh, developer Grand Gear said. And uh, players shouldn't expect a beta until at least uh, very late 2020. So um, I figure this will probably come out like, you know, early 2021, uh, which is crazy because they'll beat, uh, you know, Blizzard to the jump with their big uh, ARPG sequel. Right. And um, so Path of Exile 2 will include a new seven act campaign. A uh, whole new skill gym system, new ascendancy classes, and heaps of new equipment and other loot. Um, and they also like have like a brand new uh, engine for the game. It looks absolutely beautiful. It's stunning. It's it's crazy because it's it's uh, when looking at like the gameplay for Path of Exile Two and comparing it to Diablo Four, like their graphics like look so similar and they're both like really bloody. It's kind of hard to tell the two apart. Um. But uh, it, yeah, I'm so excited for this. Um, but in addition to this, they also have a bunch of other announcements. So uh, since Path of Exile 2 is kind of a ways away now, there's going to be uh, two other expansions coming. Uh, there's one coming in December, early December, called uh, Path of Exile's uh, Conquerors of the Atlas. Um, so uh, to my understanding, um, this is uh, it's going to have new Atlas mechanics, five new in-game bosses, a new powerful class of support gems, uh, rework of bows, new items, and a Metamorph Challenge League, and more. Uh, so that'll be in December. And there's a bunch of like, there's new in game bosses. Uh, I heard something about like, you can kind of create your own like in game boss scenarios with this one as well. Um, and then as part of this, is uh, there's this Metamorph uh, League where you talk to this really cool looking dude in like this, uh, this deep sea outfit. And yeah, this is where you can build your own boss. And uh, it's just, wow, it's crazy. I'm like, Path of Exile is like, it's it's really hard for a new person to understand. Um, but it's it's so rewarding and so fun. Um, they also announced, lastly, a uh, Path of Exile, a mobile edition of the game. And uh, unlike Diablo Immortal, this is actually built in-house. Um which is good to know. So uh, they're really like pouring uh, a lot of love and care into the mobile edition. Uh, I'm not really too big on mobile, so I doubt I'll check this out. But, um, you know, it's cool that they're, uh, you know, testing things out. And it wasn't like uh, Blizzard's horrible announcement last year. This was totally, totally different. So. Don't you all have uh, mobile devices? Have yeah. And they yeah, kind of like, they, they, they made like a little uh, slide nod to that. So which was really fun and funny. Um, but yeah, they came out the park swinging with all these new updates in addition to Path of Exile. I'm so hyped for Path of Exile 2. I uh, can't wait to play it. Um, any any thoughts? Have you guys played it? Are you guys into ARPGs like this? I, I am, actually. I go all the way back to like Diablo 2. Nice. <laughs> and I honestly, when I was watching the trailer for it, I got like Diablo 2 nostalgia vibes. Yeah, like, me too. I was just like I, I felt like I was fighting a bunch of cra- a bunch of zombie cows again. You know what I mean? Yeah. It it, it has like the same kind of dark aesthetic, like uh, you know, Diablo two now Diablo four has, which is why I say like they look so similar now, and it's crazy because one is coming out sooner, and then one is uh, free to play. 
So this versus is kind some of other like sixty dollars price tag. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, it, it just looks like the mo- the isometric movement's just a lot smoother now. It just look yeah. a lot cleaner. Look like yeah, a lot more control for dodging and stuff. Oh yeah. So that's that's always one of the things too. Like I didn't know about Path of Exile until way later, and like I started seeing people play it on Twitch and whatnot, and then I finally got into it. Like when you actually get into it and dig into it, it's actually like the equivalent of like Diablo one or two and three kind of put together, like for the the current Path of Exiles. But it has way more depth in terms of the characters and customization and all that kind of like basically character building, which is just way different. Like I could play uh, Poe a lot longer than I can play Diablo three right now, like by a long shot. Like just just because of the way the content's laid out, the way you fight and do all that other stuff. While they're very very similar, um, Poe just does a better job at keeping you excited about playing versus like Diablo. It's just like oh do this thing, oh kill this thing, oh go here, and it's not really there's not a whole lot like in terms of like the meat of it. I mean like I've tried to paying attention to it. I mean I, maybe it's just me, but I've always I've always struggled with Diablo three because of it. Yeah, I. I enjoyed diablo 3 um but like i was telling you when they announced diablo 4 uh, i was so excited my first instinct which is weird was not to go back to diablo 3 but was to try out path of exile just because it is like similar and it is something completely new and different you make it more personal in, in path of exile like you actually feel more invested in your character from the get-go i feel because it, it just seems really scripted in three you know like really linear where as path of exile i don't know it feels more organic more natural when you know you're going through the process of you know learning story going through different uh, maps and stuff listen i don't know anything about path of exile i'll be honest with you i <laughs> i've heard of the first game i've never seen any footage of it never even seen the trailer um but listen it looks from what i can see on here it looks cool um uh, path of exile 2 yeah um very kind of like atmospheric and cool um i don't know you know that's probably not the right word to use to describe that game but no it is yeah and like tutu i'm a big fan of the ar rpgs <laughs> i mean I, <laughs> I i played uh boulder skate one and two for me and then i worked on uh champions one and champions return arms on playstation 2 back in the day <laughs> so like like i could play him i could definitely play him for a long period of time especially like the old Baldur's gate but um but yeah there's a new one coming out right powder skate yeah and that's also yeah the other one that's been kind of quiet for a while now boulder skate 3 yeah because they're introducing mind flayers and stuff they're going full on hey i hate to break it to you but it's 550. yeah i know uh did you just got coming up in 10 minutes that's all good we can go over (laughs) Uh, we need we also need your help to help tutu play figure out what he's gonna play so yeah help us vote here let me put it up add uh path of exile to that or oh man you have it you have it installed (laughs) Uh, yeah do you do do you have do you have the dreadfire expansion no sorry it's pillows of eternity never mind oh i was about to say i think it's all free but (laughs) yeah yeah, sorry i was thinking of my other arpg i play a lot because i play uh the other poe as well yeah, I'm trying to decide. Uh, well, decide between my uh, my new loves, Red Dead Redemption Two, Pokemon Shield, and uh, my my older loves or slightly newer love of Path of Exile, um, Diablo. I mean, not the uh, Destiny. Sorry, ARPGs are clouding my mind right now. All righty, the poll is up there in chat. If you guys see it, it's up at the top of the channel uh, chat. You'll be able to just pull it down, and you can vote. Lots and lots of ways to vote there. Uh, and then Curly, let me get you your winnings. Uh, pick another number besides 13. 13 is already chosen. Pick another number besides 13. Well, he picked 13, but they, they're like scrolled out. Some of them are blacked out already. They're used. 19. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, there you go. Planet Alpha is what you won. What is Planet Alpha? A game called Planet Alpha. It's a platformer, actually. It's pretty. It looks pretty good. I actually oh, got. Oh a... yeah, this game. I actually think it looks super cool. And there you go. I just sent it to you from uh, Ridge of Gaming. Just sent it to you. Congrats, congrats! Don't worry, folks. We'll have more giveaways as we go on. And in fact, we could actually probably start another one here before we end. Should I do it? Well, that's a channel-specific one. Where we've got plenty of them to give away for the rest of the day. Okay. <laughs> okay um i'll hold off then i know what i'm doing 
So going on the last bit of news for today, we've uh, Red Dead Redemption actually had a really rough launch week. Like as much as I love that game, my god, on PC it was horrible. Man, you yeah. could you couldn't yeah. even launch the game without like disabling your antivirus, which is sketchy as hell. Yeah, that was day <laughs> so one. Was that was so scary. That was so man. sketchy. Yeah, every time I like would look booted up, I had to like turn it off just to get it to you know work. It was crazy. Not to mention it was crashing, so you had to do that frequently, and you're like, uh, yeah. why do I want to do this? <laughs> and even yeah. whitelisting no, it didn't weird. work. Like, whitelisting uh, it didn't yeah. work for that first day, dare to. Yeah, straight up just turn it off. I was like, oh my god. So, <laughs> Rockstar pro uh, finally communicated out to players and saying they're gonna actually going to be fixing a lot of the big crashes, and especially the antivirus problem, because that was not intended, obviously. Uh, they claim well, obviously, obviously, but... Obviously, it was not intended. Yeah, obviously, like, it was not intended, on. but... Come but yeah, on. um, but they're gonna be rewarding players uh with a poncho and what was the other stuff? It was like end game gold and a supply chest, I think. Yeah, it was a bunch of like supplies to kind of just help you out, help players out, and stuff like that. All for Red Dead Online. So if you if it's not for the main game, it's for gonna be for Red Dead Online mainly. But I mean, let's be real. Who I mean, I love the story mode. Don't get me wrong, but I I focus more of my time in Red Dead Online than I do yeah, on I mean, offline. You come for the story mode and the longevity in it is online, so you stay for online. Yeah, of course. You stay for the online. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Chucha, you want to tell us about what, what's going on with Pokemon Sword and Shield, our other love of the week? So yeah, Pokemon uh, Sword and Shield just dropped this week, and uh, there's been a lot of uh, controversy regarding it, if, you know, those that don't know. I'm sure most of you probably know if you're in tune with Pokemon. But um, the biggest thing with Pokemon Sword and Shield, like earlier this week, it came out that, um, of course, there's no national decks. Not all of the Pokemon are in this game. And, uh, you know, fans were kind of furious with that idea. And uh, the developers, Game Freak, came out this week and put out an article saying that, you know, sorry, but, um, you know, there's going to be no national decks. We're not going to add Pokemon to the game over time. You know, what pretty much what you get is what you get. And fans just... Are not they're having fuming it. Fuming at the bits. They were going off on Twitter, going off on Reddit. And uh, of course, when the review time came around, they went off in the reviews and decided to review bomb the game. Um, yes. Which is. Listen, you want to know a secret? I don't care. I think that what they're yeah. doing right now is so cool. Well, so, and, that, yeah. so that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's coming from somebody on a newer end, right? Like if you, if, right. if you're somebody that's been playing since like the original for me, like I was a little upset about it, but I also understand the technical hurdles behind it. Like the reason why most players are upset, which um, is kind of an extension of what, what uh, Captain was talking about is that they in introduced the Pokemon bank. So between each one of the big game releases, you can add your Pokemon to the bank and you could get them in the next game. Now, Having this as being an, on a new platform for one, it's coming on on Switch for the first time. Because let's let's be real, Let's Go Pikachu was a remake of uh, Red, Blue, Yellow for the original Game Boy. Yeah. It's basically just a re yeah. remake of that game. Now it's not in the same timeline as the Galar region uh, Sword and Shield, so they had to basically cut it off and say, okay, this is the new. We're gonna start from here now like and, and do the bank again in the future but it's not going to be for a while now they're planning on uh sword and shield to be kind of like their new games as a service equivalent for pokemon and for what they originally said they were just going to be planning on updates that are going to build on to sword and shield to make it longer term so when the next generation comes out you're going to re-get the bank again and, and they're going to be able to revisit a lot of these things so the problem is it's just you know the time cost money versus adding all these sprites and, and animations and abilities and testing in between the stats yeah. and all this other stuff yeah. it's a ton of work i mean for it was 780 pokemon i think it was at the time or 800 and some odd yeah it was 800 or something it's yeah it, like a crazy amount and i mean and versus they're taking a 400 Pokemon subset of this with new ones mixed with like reiterations of the Galar region of the, of some of the originals. That's a lot of, that's a lot of work on its own. Like yeah, just yeah. to integrate that. So, I mean, if you, you take it at, take it at face value, like if you wanted the game when we got it this week, sure. We got what we wanted. If you wanted the game to come out in like three more years <laughs> or two more years, <laughs> like we could get the rest of them. Sure. But it'll take a couple more years. Dude, and I'm, you know I'm what? Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the Pokemon fan base would be completely cool with a two to three year development cycle. They get all their Pokemon. Well, that's the thing but, is like even this one was already in a five year development cycle. Yeah. Does yeah. it does it really matter that much? Just play the Pokemon game. You're running around collecting little monsters. Like it, 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 you know, well, I don't care if I don't have a Charmander or not. I, I, 
These people are these people are fervent fans. You yeah, know, these are the like, ones who will buy every piece weird of Pokemon merch like, and go crazy. It's, it's so c- weird to me. It's kind of hard. Like you, you have to like as best as you can. At least have to try and put yourself to in their shoes. Like and think about like, okay, you've captured these Pokemon. You've had them for years and years and years. And then, you know, now you can't put them in the the new hot game, which it does kind of suck. But, you know, you do also have to understand, like, kind of uh, like the development process and all the assets that the devs have to build from the ground up and kind of look at it and be like, okay, you know, I can understand why I can't have all my Pokemon in this game and whatnot. And just, you know, enjoy the game and have fun with the Pokemon that's there. At least that's how I look at it. Like, I I can get it, but... That okay. requires logical thinking. Yeah. <laughs> the thing about fan folk, as I like to call them, because they come in all sh- fan folk, they don't fan have folk. logical thinking. They're like, I want this. I don't know anything about game design, but I want this. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's it's really crazy. Like like fan bases for some of these games are like pretty wild and rampant. And and the Pokemon community is like definitely very like you know, they, they're trying to do their thing and, and have their worry because they've been longtime fans, which I understand. Like, I've been a fan even myself. I'm 34 years old. I've been a fan since I was 11 years old. Like, it's been a long, you know, it's a long-running generation of, of games, you know, starting with the card game and the anime and all that stuff. So I, I definitely understand. But uh, Listen, I started in middle school. I started playing in middle school, and then before that, I played the card game. And I'll be honest with you, I've been playing the card game since fourth grade. Um, and it, I am happy with what they've put out. I'm yeah. happy with um, the content that we're getting. You know, it's it's new. It's fresh. Um, it's something that's different than what we've been doing for the last, God, 20 years, 30 years for games, not including the uh, the card games. Yeah, it's, it's new. In their 30s and some in their 40s that they don't want that to change. <laughs> they yeah. want more. But they want what they already had. People resist change, but like they're yep. they're they want change at the same time, and it's like, come on, pick one. Yep. And then uh, so they want both. They're like, why don't you make me one that has all my originals and one to all the new crap? Now, like, we ain't got money for that. Yeah, they don't. They don't. They just don't have the money for that. And there's no reason to. There's really no reason to. Uh, so going on the poll, just real quick, we're gonna touch base on that. Uh, what should Captain Tutu play after the Insider? Uh, looks like we got 12 votes with a bits boost for Red Dead Redemption 2. A 500 bits boost for yeah, Red Dead Redemption I, 2. What? That's that's I, my friend um, from that's my friend from home, and we've been friends for a really long time. And he just Snapchatted me and said, "I just spent all of my bits so that Tutu doesn't play Path of Exile." <laughs> oh so, my god! So um, yeah. A little bit of insider trading there, uh, to be honest with you. I want the exact same different game. I want the exact same different game. <laughs> oh, for Pokemon? For Pokemon, yeah. Uh, so just to finalize up, like, so we're going to close out before uh, Captain Tutu starts his stream here soon, is um, Anthem is actually planning on an over overhaul to basically do, like, Anthem Next or Anthem 2.0, as they're calling it, in, according to the rumors. Uh, there's a few dev leads that are talking a little bit about it, how they're constantly working on bringing basically the next iteration of Anthem to actually be better and be closer to what players really wanted from the get-go. Now, if you, for most of you all, if you don't know, Anthem started out as a really good, like, insight to a game that people wanted, but it turned out to be a flop, essentially. Yeah. Like, it was buggy, it was uh, technically challenging for, for a lot of players on PC. Uh, missions end game was all terrible the loot system was pretty bad i mean it's gotten made some steps to make it better but it's nowhere near a complete game still i think even now like i mean we're talking we're eight months later after the release of of it and we're it's still technically not a complete game what is like, it uh what is the new anthem called anthem 2.0 it's gonna well, be 2.0 what, or next names yeah is that, code name. is that yeah, like yeah it's, is that it, like, it's the unofficial code names the devs are saying around the office yeah is that like eva official. evangelion 2.0 you cannot advance uh well we'll see i mean the yeah. engine can handle it the problem is is they're rushed after they you know finalize certain things which and it was just a production nightmare essentially like they're like, let's make the Iron Man suits look cool, and that's pretty much where. It and that's stopped. all. The and that was like the best. Like to me, that was the best part. Like if they had actually made a ga- a solid game under the you know the fact that you basically play a cool looking Iron Man of four different t- styles, 
I would I'm still all over it. Like I love the aesthetic and the feel of the game. I just wanted it to be a game, like to be a game I actually wanted to play. I agree like, with you. I'm still attracted to the whole concept and the aesthetic. I just want them to put actual story and good mechanics in it, and I'll be agreed. all over it. And not have it be broken. Yeah, and not have it be like a complete bro. I mean, even if it was a somewhat broken mess, like even if they had a good story behind it and and good raids and all that other stuff, it would have been a decent game. The problem is it's got nothing behind it. Like literally nothing to back it up aside of it, it looks cool. Yeah, I wonder like what the hell are they act like what the hell are they gonna do? What can they do? Um because like they're really gonna have to dig in deep because the core of the game is just really flawed. Oh, and this is giving me like a lot of flashbacks of uh, No Man's Sky and what they did mm-hmm. and how they went quiet and uh, especially even with the, the next title, too. Um, so, of course, I, I wish them the best because uh, Anthem, you know, it has like really cool ideas. It's just none of them just really stick or do anything. They don't do anything with it pretty much. Um, so I hope that they really, you know, buckle down and, and dig deep and uh, make a, a kick ass game out of this. Yeah. Maybe oh, I do need too. to grab a few people who used to work on like Warframe or Destiny to come into the studio. Yeah. No know, kidding, right? Tweak this here and there. Or hold on, and yeah, let's sell it. The sell it to, uh, you know, let's to Bungie. Sell it to, sell it to no, I'll sell it to Epic or sell it to Bungie and let them take over. <laughs> uh, so is Anthem 2.0 going to be a current Anthem with their patch updates fixes? Basically, they're basically going to revamp yeah. the game for the current existing people who, who own it or want to play it uh, through the Origin Pass. From what all we heard, like all a lot of this is all speculation too, too right now. Like we don't know any concrete details. We probably won't hear about it. I'm guessing until probably E3. Yeah, and again, the 2.0 and the Anthem Next is just the official, un- unofficial jargon they're using in yeah. the studio. It's nothing official. They're not making a new game. It's all about fixing and revamping it to essentially a new and functional game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. To kind of close out the okay. show, we're going to go ahead and talk about Tucci's weekly deals and cool stuff. Uh, uh, I don't know. Tucci, you want to take on, on your weekly deals and cool stuff and tell us all yes. about the cool stuff? Hell yes. Hell yes. Uh, so, uh, again, we're, we're slowly approaching uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday, so you're going to see a ton of the deals uh, coming out. Um, this week, we've got the Doom franchise is on sale for 67% off on all Doom titles that are currently on Steam. Uh, Epic Store is having a Creator Appreciation Week, so for any uh, content creators that you like, um, they earn uh, 10, 10, you earn $10 off when making a purchase of uh, $15 or more um, by supporting creators. And uh, Humble Bundle is having huge discounts this weekend, starting at over 50% off. Uh, so the Dark Souls series are 58% off. Shadowrun Complete Collection is uh, 77% off. South Park Stick of Truth is 83% off. Game Maker Studio 2, 32% off. Uh, and then there's a, a Mark bundle that uh, for any of our um, creatives out there that want to create stuff, uh, is 85% off. Um, the Messenger is available for free on the Epic Game Source. It's like a really cool uh, indie platformer game. And you can like switch between 16-bit and like 8-bit old school style. And then lastly, we mentioned it earlier, but uh, for any of my Discord Nitro subscribers out there, you can get three months of Xbox Game Pass completely for free as long as you're a Discord Nitro subscriber. So hop on that, get the Outer Worlds, Gears 5, get all those games for uh, three months. It's a good deal. It's a good deal. Cool. All right, already. Well, since we're Captain Tucci is technically not leaving, he's basically going to be starting up, yeah. firing up his own game stream. Uh, uh, any I'll final see- words for today, guys? Uh, thank you guys so much for <laughs> coming out and supporting and uh hanging yes. out with us for this special edition of the insider we really appreciate it and hey we Donate. reached we reached our donation goal but keep donating we will take your money and we will send it to them because yeah, I, will, I, will, cool I will put myself through pain to help these kids out i have habanero peppers here uh, that i will be eating uh at certain oh, tiers man. <laughs> and i have uh the bean boozled uh set right here so I'll put oh, myself through man. hell if you this don't is great. Eat. And don't oh, worry. Now I'm going to have to go to the hot sauce place up the street. Thank oh, you. man. Oh, man. Uh, also, keep in mind, guys and gals, there are going to be continuing Steam Steam code giveaways here uh, periodically throughout the rest of the day and night for the streams. Uh, Kid Tutu will also be running some here soon. Shortly after, uh, Kid Tutu will also be 
Lizzie Fox, then myself, or no, then Zanus Dayseif, and then myself, and then Tam Tam is going to be closing out the uh, the 24 hours. But definitely stay tuned for all of the giveaways and hanging out and supporting Gamers Outreach. Um, like I said, I, the meta show crushed it. <laughs> like literally crushed our goal uh, yeah. today. It was great. So I'm super happy keep that donating, that happened. People. But definitely keep donating. We're gonna continue on pushing on and see as far how far we can get with our our charity drive. Um, but we all hope you had a had a fun time here on Insider. We are not having a show tomorrow because we moved our show from this weekend to today. I get to um, sleep. Whoop, whoop. But yeah, I uh, hope you all have a great one, and we'll see Kid Tutu here in just a minute. See you all later. I don't, I don't care, care if, if you, you buy, buy a permit. permit. Do you, Do you know, know how, how little, little I actually, actually care, care if you have, have a permit? permit. I think the boat has some. Yes, I do. Oh, I got sleeks for you. It's like, like, simple, simple shit like that. No, simple shit like that. If you can answer that, I'll help you. I need to break in and say more original every week. That's a goal. Do you really actually get paid for that? Because you deserve money for that last one. I'm going to say that.